All right, hello and welcome to the worked out solutions for uh, quest number one, algebra quest number one. Let's start with number one. There we go. All right, circle each of the following that has a value of 10. Um, you may have to do, you know, there may be one more than one correct answer, so we're going to have to do all these. Here we go. So I can... I can determine that the order of operations tells me I should do the parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication and division, right? And so those are going to be a little bit independent of each other. They're not going to interfere with each other if I do them kind of at the same time. So I'll do that. 2 squared is 4 plus 7 minus what's in the parentheses. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so we're going to be subtracting a negative 1. Negative 3 divided by 3 is a negative 1, okay? Uh, 4 plus 7 is 11, plus 1 minus 1 is 10, right? Uh, that didn't look like a 1. Plus 1 minus 1, they're going to cancel each other out. I don't know why I'm having, maybe I'm having a stroke or something. Here we go. So 11 plus 1 minus 1 is 11. All right, hopefully... You were a little confused by that because I should have gotten 11 from the beginning. 3 cubed is 27. Minus 15 minus what's in the parentheses, which is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 14 divided by 7 is negative 2, so I'll just move on to that. Minus 2. Uh, 27 minus 15 is 12. Right? Um... Yeah, minus 2, 12 minus 2 is 10, and so this guy is good. This one didn't work out, this one did. It says circle each of the following expressions, so we're good. So 9, right, 3 squared is 9, plus 5, minus, what's in the parentheses, 6 minus 3 is 3, minus, right, negative 5, divided by 5 is negative 1, 9 plus 5 is 14, minus 3 minus 1, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, so 10, and this one works out as well. 3 squared, again, 9. Minus 3, minus what's in the parentheses, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. We're going to be subtracting a negative 6. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. 9 minus 3 is 6, plus 6, minus 2. So this is 12, minus 2, 10. All right, moving on. I'm going to show the area of the rectangle. Show. Um, so what we have here is a rectangle that is 4 in the vertical direction and is 6 in the horizontal direction. And we can see that there are 4 rows of 6 squares, meaning that there are 24 inch inch squares right there. Uh, explain what your answer means. In other words, let's say that it was, your answer is 84, which it wasn't. It was 24. What does that mean? 84 is a quantity, so what are there 84 of? So uh, I saw some people answer the, the question as if the answer was 84. That's fine. Or they answered it with their answer, which was 24. I'm going to answer it with 24, but uh, I gave credit for people who answered it with the wrong answer. That was fine. But just means that there are 24 squares. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, yeah. So next is finding the area of this strange looking figure. Uh, my favorite way to do this one, I've done it a few times now, is to break off this little rectangle from this rectangle and treat them as two separate things. Uh, the next thing I have to figure out is, well, this is 15 and this is 8 inches, so this must be 7 inches, because 8 plus 7 would have to be 15. Well, that gives me this guy right here. This is a 3 by 5 or a 7 by 5, which is 35 square inches. 
This one's an 8 by 8, which gives me 64 square inches. Um, and that would be great. I would just add 64 plus 35, except for there's this missing chunk. How big is this missing chunk? It's big enough to fit 20 inches squared, which means it's big enough to have removed 20 inches squared from this bigger rectangle here. So I can say 64 minus those 20 that it lost plus 35. That should give me what I need. So 64 minus 20 is 44 pl 35 uh, is going to be 79 inches squared. 79 inches squared. Okay. And if I go past some part of this too fast, then just go back, rewind it, watch it again. Um, if you have questions and you want them clarified, then come talk to me and I'll let you know. Uh, here, we're going to add these together. We need a common denominator. Our common denominator, it's not going to be 9, it's not going to be 12. I hope it's not 9 times 12. This is 3 times 4. This is 3 times 3. So if we had 3 times 3 times 4, it would be good. So um, 36. So if we multiply this by 3 over 3, and this by 4 over 4, it should give us a denominator of 36 for both. So this is going to be 33 over 36 plus 8 over 36 equals uh, 41 over 36. If you want, you can write 1 and 5 36. Okay, but both of the people, the one who answered this way and the one who answered this way, would be correct. So either one of those put in this answer line is great. Moving along, find the following product. So I just want you to work out this algorithm as normal, right? 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 30 is 30. 5 times or 50 times 0 is 0. 50 times 30 is, yeah, 150, right? Uh, or 50 times 30, actually. 50 times 30 is 1,500. 1500. So we have a 0, we have a 3, we have a 5, we have a 1. We just add it all together easily. 1530. 1530. Multiplying fractions, we multiply straight across. Cross canceling if we can, which we can do. This 2 and this 2 divide each other. They're both left as a 1. So we multiply straight across. 1 times 5 is 5. 12 times 1 is 12. 5 twelfths. If you didn't cross cancel, all that would happen is you'd get 10 over 24 and you'd simplify to 5 over 12. Find the following quotient. So when we're dividing fractions, when we divide by a fraction, we can multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. I'm going to prove that to you one more quick time. And when I say one more, I mean not the last time. So if I multiply by 9 over 11 in the numerator and denominator, then you think about it. I'm just multiplying by 1. 9 11 divided by 9 11 is 1. But in the denominator, we get 1, right? 11 times 9 is 99. <clears throat> 9 times 11 is 99. 99 over 99 is 1. So we're dividing something by 1, which means it really didn't matter that we divided by 1. We're just going to get this as the answer. So up here we have 3 fifths times 9 over 11. Okay, and that will be our answer, whatever that comes out to be. 3 times 9 is 27. 5 times 11 is 55. Okay, so that's going to be our final answer, 27 over 55. Find and show or draw the volume of the given solid. It's not to scale. Okay, um, so I'm going to do it this way. This is how I'm going to show it. What I'm going to show is this wall, what I've come to call a wall of cubes. I'm going to prove to you how many cubes are in this wall, first of all. Well, how many cubes fit this direction? Five. It says so right there. 
Okay, so five this direction and five going down the side here too. So how many cubes are in this wall? Well, here's a here's one example cube. Here's one of them. There's one of them. Well, five of them can fit that way. I can put that layer of five or that row of five again and again and again and again, five times, right? So all together, if I were to draw these lines here real quick or really slowly, you can see now, you could count them for yourself, there's 25. So there's a wall of 25 cubes. Okay, what can I do with the, the wall of 25 cubes? I can fit it in here 11 times. I can fit another wall and another wall and another wall and another wall. 11 walls, okay? So 25 cubes per wall, it says cubs, cubes per wall times 11 walls. Walls divided by walls is nothing, or it's not nothing, it's one, but all we're left with is cubes. 25 cubes times 11 is going to be 275 cubes. Of course, these are specific kinds of cubes, so our answer will be 275 centimeter cubes. And we'll put a three there, because it means a cube. It means a, a shape that is a cube times a cube times a cube. That's the volume of that shape. Please explain your answer. In other words, your answer is a number. It's counting something. What is it counting? Cubes. It's counting cubes. We could put centimeter cubes. Centimeter cubes. But in the end, what it's counting, that number 275, it's counting 275 cubes. Okay. Use the area model to show the following. Uh, my daughter was curious about this this morning. What was this, she said. What is that thing? So uh, I started from the beginning, talked about the area of a simple rectangle, did a few of those, worked our way up to this, and uh, she did all right. But uh, there's, there's, some, there's some more work to be done there. But we, we and by we, I mean me, uh, why I like to use it and why I make we use it, um, is that the area of a rectangle is a good way to show multiplication, not only to you know, be a practice problem for multiplication, but it's a good way to show multiplication. If I want to show you 6 times 5, I can draw a rectangle that is 6 by 5. And we see what multiplication is. It's 5 groups of 6 or 6 groups of 5. Either way, it's the same thing. So to show you 96 times 65, I can use a rectangle that is 96 on one side and 65 on the other side. I can just write 96 and 65. But that is not any easier than what I just was asking you. Because if you knew what the area of a 96 by 65 is, you would just know what 96 times 65 was. But we can work it out in pieces by making this much of it 90, 90, let's keep Oh, it's, this program's going to wig out on me. I think it might crash. That from there to there is 90. And from here to here, we'll call 6. Okay, we are back, I think. Uh, this much is 90 from here to there, and from there to there is 6. For a total of 96... This side from here to here is going to be 60, and this side is going to be 50. So if I added this, it would be 96. If I added this, it would be 65. So this is a rectangle that's 96 by 65. The area will be whatever the product of 96 and 65 is. I do this to show you why, when we multiply this stuff together the way we do, in the algorithm like we just did a minute ago, why we do each of those pieces. Why do we multiply 5 by 6? Because we can see... The ones and the ones get multiplied together, right? That's 30. Why do we multiply 5 by 9? Because here we have it. It's actually not 5 by 9, it's 5 by 90, right? That's going to give us a bunch of tens. How many tens is 90 by 5? It's 45 tens or 450, right? Why do we move on and then do 6 by 6? It's actually not 6 by 6. It's 60 by 6. And we can see that here, 60 
by 6. And what is that? That's 360. Okay, and why it is our final step? Why do we do 6 times 9? It's not 6 times 9, it's 60 times 90. Right? And what's 60 times 90? That's 6 tens times 9 tens. That's 54 tens. Uh, 9 tens times 6. Oh, it's 54 hundreds, excuse me. Tens times tens is hundreds. How many hundreds? 54 hundreds. Okay, and we add it all together, and you can see that happening here as well. Uh, that kind of puts these steps together, but we can do them this way too. 5400 plus 360 plus 5450 plus 30. That's zero tens. That's handy, right? This happened to give us no ones. Uh, 6 plus 5, that's 11, plus 3 is 14. Okay, that's actually 140, what we just got. 400 plus 300 plus 400, right? 400 plus 400 is 800, 9, 10, 11, 1,200, right? So that's 1,000. 5,000 plus 1,000 is 6,000. So 6,240, right? That little guy right there, um... You may not think it's very good, but it actually is helping my daughter, who's, who's eight, to really see what multiplication is all about. Um, she's not, you know, completely proficient in multiplication, but she's learning it. Um, so use the area model to, follow, to uh, show the following product. So we've done this before. Uh, this is a 5 by 3R plus 5 rectangle. This side will be 5. From here to here is 5. And this side will be 3R plus 5. This part is 3R, and this part is 5. Doesn't look to scale, but none of my drawings ever do. So this side is 3R plus 5. So this little guy here, that's no big deal, right? It's a 5 by 5 rectangle. We get what's happening there. There's 25 what we will call squares, even though they're not exactly squares. What's going on over here? Well, from here to here is 3R. This is an R, and this is an R, and this is an R. That's R plus R plus R. That's 3R. Right? And so here's a row of R by 1 rectangles. R on one side, 1 on this side. And there's, you know, same for those ones. And we can fit five of those rows of three R's. How many R's are there? There's one, two, three, four. This is silly. There's three of them this way, five this way. So there's 15. 15 R's plus 25 squares. And that's distribution. Five times three R, 15 R. Five times five, 25. Here we have just some stripped down distribution, right, without the rectangle. 4 times 4z, 16z, but we could certainly imagine that as a rectangle. That's uh, 4 z's in a row times 4 rows of those 4 z's is 16 z's. 4 times 7, right, that's a little rectangle off to the side. That is going to make a plus 28 little uh, 1 by 1 squares. Uh, this problem here, what's that all about? It's just showing that you know that negatives distribute as well. So negative 6 times 5z is negative 30z. Negative 6 times negative 12 is positive. Um, so to 78. No, 72. 72. Okay. Um, some by the following expression, we're going to have to use distribution for part of it and then continue from there. So 4 times 5a is 20a. 4 times 9 is 32 minus that 3 that's still there. Well, the, can it combine with anything? Minus 3, I can't subtract 3 from 20a because these are not 1s. These are a's. These are 1s. So I can subtract 3 from 32, though. Those 32 ones. Plus 29. Okay, what's up here? This is just to show that you know that distribution distributes to all terms inside the parentheses. So there's 
three terms. We know them when they're separated by addition or subtraction. 8 times 3a is 24a. So many a's there are. How many m's will there be when I have 9 m's times 8 groups of them? That's 72 m's. 8 times 3, again, that's 24, but it's 24 ones this time instead of 24 a's. Okay, so it distributes across all terms. All right, this is just to get that you understand that, you know, how, where the negatives come in, it, uh, that, uh, you know, negative, what's, a, what's an example of what I want to show you? Uh, ne negative 4 plus 2 is not negative 6, right? Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 4. Start 4 to the left of 0 plus 2. That's negative 2. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for here. But we can just work left to right. Order of operations says from left to right. So we can do 9 minus 5. That's 4. Minus 5, minus 7, plus 7. You know what? Minus 7 plus 7. I can combine those together to be 0. So those are just kind of cancel each other out. Uh, minus 5 minus um, 4 plus 2 minus 4 plus 2. Uh, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Um, minus 4 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 2 is going to be negative 3, right? I start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left of 0. Negative 5 plus 2, 1, 2. What is that? That's 3 to the left of 0, so that's negative 3. Simplify the following expression, right? We're just testing that you get that uh, with multiplication thrown into the mix. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Negative 9 plus 10, negative 9. That's 9 to the left of 0. Move to the right, 10. You're going to be at positive 1. 1 to the right of 0. Simplify the following square root. Uh, we learned how we can write this as the square root of 5 over the square root of 9. We learned how if we have the square root of 5, we're just going to leave it as the square root of 5 because there is no nice square root of 5. It's 2 point something, but uh, we're going to not worry about that. We're going to just write perfectly exactly the square root of 5. But the 9 does have a square root, a nice one. It is 3. So the square root of 5 over 3. We are dividing by a fraction, and we learned that we can take 11 over 8 and multiply it by the reciprocal of 11 tenths, which is 10 over 11. I justified this earlier, so I'll save you the time this time. I'll cross-cancel the 11s, get, uh, ooh, I'll cross-cancel the 2s that these both have. This divided by 2 is 5, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 1 times 5 is 5, 4 times 1 is 4. 5 fourths or 1 and a fourth is fine. I'm going to leave it as 5 fourths. Simplify the following expression. What is this testing? This is still distribution, and I want to see that you know that division distributes. Okay? So if division distributes, that means I'm going to divide negative 4c by 4. I am also going to divide 8 by 4. You can see I'm, I'm subtracting it because negative divided by positive is negative. Negative 4c divided by 4 is negative 1c. I could just start right negative c. 8 divided by 4 is 2. We're subtracting that. Subtract 2. Okie doke. Next, is this equation true or is it false? If it's true, we have the one number equals exactly the same number. If it's false, we have something that's not, not true. So we've got to simplify this correctly, though. 4... Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15, plus 6 equals 4 times negative 6. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. It's not looking good. Uh, plus 4, I can already see this is going to be false, but we continue. Um, well, 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 15, that makes a nice 25. And this is negative 24 plus 4. Start 24 to the left of 0. Add 4. That means to the, move to the right 4. You're going to be at negative 20. Those are not equal. So that is false. Complete the table below. Okay, a little puzzle here. Okay, but 
as we, we covered, tried to help you, um, you know, we identified a pattern and we kind of built it up ourselves. And then we discovered that if we can spot the pattern of what we're adding, which is five, we're adding five, we're adding five. Okay, let's start out with our equation as y equals 5x, because it seems like multiples of 5, but they are off a little bit, right? And we test it out. This is the next part. We're going to have plus or minus something, right? Maybe plus 0, but still, we got to figure out what that is by testing it out. If this is the equation, then 5 times x is it. That gives me y. 5 times 1 is 5, but it's giving me 1, right? So 5 times 1 that gives me 5, but it's supposed to be giving me 1. So how do I fix that? I subtract 4. Let's try it on the second one. 5 times 2, that's 10. But I'm supposed to be getting 6, and wouldn't you know it, subtracting 4 would fix that. 5 times 3 is 15, but I'm supposed to be getting 11. And if I subtracted 4, that would fix it. 5 times 4 is 20. If I subtract 4 from it, let's see what happens. 20 minus 4 is 16, and that's what I'm supposed to be getting for y. So that must be the rule. Subtract 4 every time, and we're good. That tells us that we can use that pattern on this number here. Right, dot, dot, dot. 5 times 740 minus 4 is equal to, and that will fill in the blank for us, uh, 34, I think I've got it, but I'm going to make sure. Um, and so it's 3,700, I subtract 4, and I get 3696. 3696. Okay, there we go. Next problem. Let's find three ordered pairs and graph those three ordered pairs and draw a line between those three points. Um, I'm going to pick uh, negative 1, 0, that's always easy, and 2, for no good reason. All right, so for the negative 1, I'll show you what that looks like over here. Negative 3 times negative 1 plus 2. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, negative 1, 5. Why don't we just go ahead and plot that one? Negative 1, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. x is negative 1, y is 5 on that point. Uh, 0, I don't even have to write this down, right? Negative 3 times 0, easy, 0, plus 2, 0 plus 2 is 2. Maybe I'll write this stuff down here. Negative 3 times 2 plus 2. That's negative 6 plus 2, that's negative 4. Negative 4. Let's plot those other two points. 0, not to the left, not to the right, right in the middle. Go up to 0, comma 2. Puts us right there. Whenever this starts to get glitchy, I try to save it so I don't uh, lose it. 2, comma, negative 4. So 1, 2, comma, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go, and I'm going to do my best to draw a straight line between these. Ooh, that's not too bad. A little arrow, because it just could keep on going forever in this direction as well. There we go. There's our line. And just let me, I uh, can't pass up an opportunity to tell you the truth. Uh, the truth about this is that any other point that I draw is going to wind up being on the line. So actually, the truth about the line is that it's not a line. It's a bunch of points. See, what we do is we draw a couple of points, and then we shortcut drawing the rest of the points by drawing the line, because the line is the shape we would get if we did draw those points. See, I could just keep putting the points where they would land, which is on the line. All those points go together to make this line shape. And that's all graphs. All graphs are like that. It's just a bunch of points making the shape. Distribution, we're just seeing, do you get that it distributes from the right, right? And I could just say, well, you know, 3 times 5 
That's the same as 5 times 3. That's called commutativity of multiplication. So 3m minus 4 is the same as 8 times 3m minus 4. And if that is you know, more comfortable for you to look at, then there you go. Distribute from the left now or from the right. It's all the same thing. 8 times 3m is 24m. Same as this. 8 distributed to 3m, 24m. 8 times negative 4, negative 32. And it is done. Reverse distribution. So what we have here, it's like a problem that was like this. Distribution happened, and this was the result. So what happens, or what, what does it look like before the distribution of something to these two terms? It looks like we could have had a 6 that got distributed to an r, right? 6 times r gave us 6r. Does it work for the second term? Can we do 6 times something that gives us negative 18? When we distribute the 6, can we distribute it to something that gives us negative 18? How about negative 3? r minus 3, 6r, negative 18. We reverse distributed the 6. Undistributed, if you like. And this should be the last one. It is the last one. So, um... Test the given value of z and tell whether it is the solution of the equation. So if I take z to be 5 and I plug it in there for z, will I get something true? I can already tell I won't. So here we go. Negative 6 equals negative 6 times 5 plus 18. Let's see what happens. Negative 6 equals negative 30. Well, I could be, can I be wrong? I could be wrong. Plus 18. Um, let's see, 18, no. Negative 30 plus 18 is going to be 12, negative 12. Negative 6 equals negative 12. No, it doesn't. Negative 6 does not equal negative 12. So this 5 being plugged in for z does not work. It is not a solution. All right. And as I said uh, towards the beginning and in the middle, if anything I say there uh, you need to re-explain, the beauty of a video is jump back and watch it again. Watch it 50 times in a row. It doesn't matter as long as each time you gain a little more insight. Uh, use this video to prepare for a retake. Do a retake, please, um, if you want to improve your grade. And um, thanks for watching.